Bonjour everyone, welcome to another Diecast Showcase. Uh, so today we're mostly going to be checking out some recent finds. Uh, as I uh, found a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and instead of uh, freeing a whole bunch of pieces, basically, like I've been doing in the last few videos, I thought we'd do less of uh, less cracking and more uh, comparos. So uh, hopefully this is interesting to you guys. Um, so I'm going to go through... Uh, what uh, my latest founds look uh, finds look like and uh, maybe make some uh, links to uh, you know other uh, other casts basically that uh, are uh, relevant to it so without further ado we will go ahead and get started so uh, first cast basically uh, well first cast first first few casts basically I'll show you a bunch of Hot Wheels main lines that uh, managed to stumble upon it's a big drop of uh, not sure if it's E or F case again I'm in Canada, so international cases, no case codes. So, and obviously with the repeats that uh, tend to happen from case to case, not exactly sure. But I did manage to pretty much get all my wants out of the E slash F case. I'm pretty sure it's F case. So, um, yeah, let's uh, check out what uh, what I found. So, uh, first one that I picked up was uh, this uh, uh, DeLorean. The MC DeLorean, the MC12. Um, so, you know, uh, I've got a couple variations of this cast, basically. I've got a Mystery Machine, a um, Decade Series car as well in green with gold wheels, which is really nice. Uh, obviously, the obligatory Back to the Future uh, version. And now we have this one. So, no rear tampos. We... Uh, don't have we have some uh do we have there's no no there's no front tampos either we got some side tampos and a top there but uh yeah it should be a good detailing project anyways so i don't have any deloreans loose i'm gonna hold off on cracking this one open simply because i'm not sure if i want to crack this one open or the actual um mystery machine from a uh, previous wave from uh, i believe last year i may be cracking that one open instead future I'm planning on cracking all my mystery, my uh, mystery uh, mystery models, anyways, uh, eventually. So, but this is a nice color wave. Uh, gold ten spokes are always a win. Uh, cool light blue, uh, which is a nice change from the uh, regular uh, stainless steel uh, brush finish. Um, without the BTTF stuff, also is pretty cool uh, to have the uh, louvers on the back. Uh, fairly dark tinted windows. And, uh, yeah, we got some groovy graphics going on here, which is uh, very 80s. Very 80s. So, also, um, didn't want to pick up this, uh, not a casting I, 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 I adore, but the Hot Wheels version of the uh, uh, first-gen uh, Viper. Um, now, since these uh, tri-spoke wheels have been out, uh, mainly I wanted to pick this up for the wheels and due to the fact that these came with tri-spokes on the get-go. They're not as close as the uh, previous tri-spokes from, uh, you know, the 90s, but uh, it's a pretty nice cast. Um, and uh, I did want to do a little compare on this one, actually. Uh, if you please give me a second. Yeah, so I kind of wanted to do a comparo um, with the uh, Matchbox version of this cast. Seeing where, you know, the details vary, as I like to do, and, uh, you know, what's different, what's the same. Because um, uh, the uh, this casting has been around for, been a while, for, uh, been around a while, you know. It's, it's not a new cast in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it's the first one I actually pick up from Hot Wheels, and I wanted really to pick it up simply to do this comparo. So here's the Matchbox version to compare. Now if we look at sizing, you'll definitely notice that the Matchbox casting is bigger. Definitely bigger. Um, also, uh, one thing I wanted to point out is the placement of the Viper Tampos on the front fenders, which are definitely not the same. Uh, no Viper logo on the uh, Hot Wheels version. Um, also, um, priorities in regards to tampo placement. Where are the lights, Hot Wheels? There you go. I mean, there. that's been said. Uh, I won't dwell on it. But overall, the proportions, if we compare side by side, 
Hot Wheels version is much narrower. It's also a little bit taller and stubbier. Now, I'm not sure which one is closer to reality, honestly, but I um, thought it'd be kind of cool to just compare them side by side. Let me know which one's your favorite in the comments. Um, I mean, I, I have a preference for Matchbox in this specific case. I find that the Matchbox version is maybe a little bit better than the Hot Wheels version. Uh, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not sure which one is more realistic, though. So, either way. Cool uh, little pickup there. And, uh, you know, finally I have a Viper cast that uh, may not be an old school one, but is still, uh, you know, pretty uh, pretty decent one, if you ask me. Um, so, yeah. Uh, next up, I did kind of... I had to. Color variation. Gold... Uh, S15 Sylvia Liberty Walk Silhouette car. Um, so basically the reverse uh, color wave of the uh, previously released uh, almost John Player special looking kind. Uh, definitely do prefer the five spoke, uh, the, the OH5s on the uh, gold version below. But, uh, you know, either way. Pretty cool, pretty cool cast. Uh, definitely very cool to have the uh, gold variation. Only variation I no longer have is that uh, reverse color scheme of the original one. Uh, the uh, yellow uh, with white as opposed to the white with yellow. Uh, but uh, yeah, the gold one definitely looks good. Uh, I'm going to keep it on card. I don't even know if I'm going to keep it or anything like that. But, uh, you know, still. Um yeah, this cast is really good. I mean, it's got front uh, and rear lens lights. It's got the uh, mirrors. Uh, you know, the details are great. So far, not a single, single bad uh, bad uh, color wave of this as well. Oh, yeah, I, I do not have the red edition because obviously Canada, so no targets, but uh, still. Um, another one that I picked up, and actually I saw this one a couple times uh, without picking it up. And the reason why I didn't pick it up is simply due to the fact that I thought this was a recolor, and it's actually not. Um, the 86 T-Bird Pro Stock. Now, I was sure this was a Matt and Debbie Hayes uh, uh, recolor, but it's actually not, in the sense that the Matt and Debbie Hayes is an 88 model year, whereas this is an 86. So it this is pre-facelift, and the Matt and Debbie Hayes version is the post-facelift. So definitely visible through the front fascia, even easier to see on the card, and the rear lights as well that are not the same. Now I'm going to show you the difference via two different castings that aren't really related to this specific one there, but just a quick mention to say that the graphics are really cool and to me are very reminiscent of the um, the Ultra Hots. Uh, and secondly, this thing is way more weighty pretty sure be freaking fast on the on the hot wheels tracks uh there's a lot more metal compared to the uh lower uh body cladding that's all plastic like base of the ba base extends to up to that mid uh midline that you see on the casting here on the uh, 88 version so the 86 is definitely heavier and um yeah gray blue color and uh, I love these T the T Birds from this era because it was a car as a kid that I really liked. Just to show you the differences between the two, I pulled out a ma an old majorette and an old matchbox of the uh, basically eighty three to eighty six, and then eighty seven to eighty eighty seven and eighty eight version of the T Bird. Um, here they are. So they're both in play worn condition. They're both thrift store finds, but you know they're pretty close color color wise. So front end as you can see you've got the the kind of like uh, sealed beam front lights on the majorette on the right as uh, as opposed to the uh, more modern uh, looking lights on the left on the uh, facelift version um, obviously this is really um, this is really to go with the times and what instigated this is really the Ford Taurus the first generation Ford Taurus that uh, kind of gave styling cues to uh, the rest of the Ford range. Uh, and in the rear, as you can see, you've got the same thing, that band type uh, rear light on the uh, 87 Plus. 
whereas the 86 and older has the older almost Lincoln-ish tail lights and you can probably see on the right side on the major red version there that uh, we have that little T-Bird old school T-Bird logo that's embossed in the light lens so you know very uh, personal luxury coupe versus something that was getting a little bit sportier and a little bit more modern. Uh, you know, profiles are literally exactly the same. We're, we're really just talking about a restyle, but, you know, I thought it would be uh, interesting to show you guys the difference between the two. Uh, all right, next up, um, I'm going to be looking at uh, some uh, little, another piece of American muscle here. I really, really was happy to see this cast come out um in this type of uh livery the uh stingray convertible the uh c2 corvette uh c3 actually my apologies c3 corvette roadster um not a big fan of convertibles and not a big fan of the chrome interior but this thing is like super clean stock looking rear tampos um you know side tampos with those uh, that intricate uh grill on the front fenders and um you know, front doesn't have any tampos, but it's all good. But you have the pop-up lights that are raised. Plus, uh, as probably a lot of you know, that little circle on the bottom there uh, is actually uh, somewhere you can put, the uh, example, the flashlight from your cell phone. And it actually lights up the front lights, which is a really cool feature, I find. So um, definitely happy to pick up this one. And, you know, this is like a an interim, like, you know, uh, 68 to 72 is really the, uh, you know, the small chrome bumper uh last of the muscle era type corvettes before uh emissions killed everything so i find this was kind of an important piece to have in my collection because i love these stock looking cars Ashbox normally makes uh, more stock looking cars than hot wheels but this one is a big win in my opinion um the next one i'm going to show you is actually the only one i'm going to crack today the reason why i'm going to crack it pretty straightforward we're talking about the magnus walker 71 911 um reason why i crack it open i want to crack it open is because technically this is totally a repeat with different uh different wheel color um proof being that this is the uh first release so retro rides versus night burners um so these two are extremely similar you'll probably notice that the color uh the color waves are actually reversed with the Red base versus blue base and uh, red graphics versus blue graphics. Uh, both are on uh, five spokes. Uh, chrome lip, black center on the uh, new one and the uh, gold chrome on the old one. But literally the only difference is the wheels. Uh, the second wave of this was literally a color flip, uh, which is exactly the same as this one. I honestly did not keep up on the variations because seriously, like, you know, reverse coloring of the tampos versus the base is not something I'm going to fall into. But I really wanted to get one of these loose. So um, I did pick it up. I'm going to I'm gonna release this one, basically. This one stays carded because it's a first, uh, first release. So, um, and it's extremely dusty also. Because I've had this ever since release. And this is a uh, 2017... 2017 release there as you can see blurrily there we go in focus so yeah this one i've had uh, since new and um, they actually did make a premium version of this as well which uh i do have and i've showed off before in a uh, best in pairs so you know color combo on these ones are the same um, definitely uh definitely uh give us a good opportunity to see the differences in between the two we're talking about going from uh, premium to mainline or mainline to premium in this case i guess it's mainline to premium back to mainline but uh yeah so this is one i definitely like you know uh very simple tampo work nothing excessive nothing crazy um and yeah also another reason why i wanted to crack this open is simply due to the fact that uh you know um i do have uh another version of this cast loose and i thought it would be a really good compliment i have this really cool uh Polizei version so i thought that uh you know urban outlaw Polizei kind of fits you know so crack it open get it out of that packaging and let it breathe well, there we go we've got the magnus walker urban outlaw 
and the wow this is a good roller and the um Polizei tampoed release i believe it's from 2018 or some 2019 maybe so yeah um i did uh, do a just a little bit of detailing on the uh, Polizei version you can see added front lights also added a little bit of silver to the uh, inside of the uh, mirrors just to replicate the mirror glass and uh, detailed out the uh, rear bumperettes as well as the exhaust system there just to give it a little extra pizzazz but you know just some silver sharpie here and there just to just to complement the cast because you can see that uh, without the front lights it's definitely sorely lacking so this will be getting the exact same treatment basically exact same treatment as you can see on the bullet side version so um yeah we'll leave those out you know just for fun How about there there you go um yeah next up uh we're gonna go to my top three of the case basically in um in this uh specific case so um bronze uh bronze metal finalists it's a little cool honda civic custom cvcc uh, honda civic uh with the uh small diameter the eight millimeter uh uh, tri-spoke uh, at van looking wheels awesome stuff you got the front rear tampos done little uh, tape X's on the front lights in case a little fender bender happens make sure there's not a whole bunch of glass on the track there got the black hood going on on there uh, the rear spoiler is, or the rear uh, wing is part of the uh, uh, rear uh, the back glass uh, this is a really good one and it's cool because I love the fact that, you know, Hot Wheels and Matchbox share the Mattel ownership, but they actually go ahead and put out the same cast, but in totally different versions, as shown here. I find that's really, really cool. You can see you got the custom, really cool looking, you know, Kawasaki type, uh, you know, highlighter green versus the completely stock, you know, this is the white version there. It's the uh, second color wave, I believe, of this cast. First one being the yellow, mustard yellow. And they came out again in red. Um, so, yeah. I mean, these just complement each other so well. I'm kind of turning into a best in pairs video here. But, uh, you know, I thought it'd be fun to do some comparos in addition to just checking out uh, what I found there. So, put a little bit of contacts into it. So, runner-up for uh, my pick of the case. Um... Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, so it would be the um, the uh, IMSA uh, Audi 90 Quattro uh, touring car. Uh, I think I noticed that uh, this could be a casting error. I'll have to go back to where I found these to see. Well, hopefully they still have more by tomorrow. But um, look at this big uh, casting defect here. And there's a little bit of it also. On the other side, I really have to check to see if there's a, that's a casting issue or not. But I mean, it definitely looks like one for sure. Uh, yeah, no rear tampos on this one. But this is like an iconic car from the early 90s. Uh, and it's an IMSA car. So this actually raced in North America, um, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, uh, you got the traditional uh, Audi... Uh, the Quattro GmbH and uh, the Audi Sport uh, colors. Uh, these were powered by the uh, infamous uh, five-cylinder turbo, uh, made famous in the uh, our the Audi S2, RS2, S6, uh, the uh, C4 variant, a uh, whole bunch of other cars that had this five-cylinder, and uh, it goes all the way back to the year Quattro. Um, good old uh, you know 1980 release of the uh, first all-wheel drive uh, sports car pretty much that uh, got some press time so and this is uh the livery that it would have run in originally i believe not as detailed but uh yeah definitely very cool very very cool casting and i know a lot of people are in love with this casting same here and of course no surprise winner of best in this case without a doubt the 1973 Porsche 911 Carrera RS 2.7 liter. Uh, now, this is actually one that eventually I might free, but I'm not yet sure. Now, you can probably see that we've got the blue striping going on on here, and this is coming out uh, in an ulterior case in orange. 
but and normally these cars did have the color-coded wheels if we're talking about the Fuchs wheels that uh, uh, would be color-coded to that uh, side uh, band stripe there and uh, to actually show you that I have the Tamika premium version of this car here now it's a completely different category but see those wheels basically how they're color-coded to the stripe I really really feel like doing the exact same thing on this uh, 2.7 RS basically make those centers blue and continue on those stripes just like you see on the Tamika version on the bumpers just to make it a little bit a little bit better you know obviously you know the Tamika version is not in the same price range at all I picked this up when it was just released so I did not pay a premium for it this is like maybe something that I paid uh, 10, 10 to 12 dollars for Whereas uh, now they're, it's probably worth double uh, as it was discontinued a while ago. But uh, yeah, nevertheless, uh, it's definitely a very cool cab. I'm very happy that uh, we got a replacement for the old Corgi uh, cast. There was one that kind of looked like this livery with a race number in, the, in, in addition. An old Hot Wheels from the 90s and definitely not proportion wise worth uh, its weight in gold. But you know what? Definitely not the end of the world either way. Um, all right, we've gone pretty much through everything that's basic. Now, um, we're going to move on to, uh, well, actually, no, there's a little bit of more basic stuff that I did want to show you. Um, I did manage to pick up um, a Matchbox 5-pack that was definitely looking into uh, finding. I know I saw it on a Diecast Dude video, and I saw it in a couple other videos as well, the hunting videos. And it was this pack right here, which is the uh, MBX European Highways. So not all these casts I'm completely crazy about, but the one in the middle that you see right here, that light blue Citroen DS19 is the one that I was after because this is a cast that I've been hunting for for I don't know how long. Always miss it. It was in Best of France in black. Never found it. And now I have it finally. So I'm very happy about that. Well, actually, it's a DS21. Sorry about that. DS19 is actually the Majorette version that I picked up not that long ago. In, a, in another five pack and a gift pack. Uh, so yeah, this is the star of the show for me, without a doubt. Uh, you know, I won't go on about all the specific features of the car because there's so much. Uh, if ever you guys are uh, into the one-to-one -one scale automotive videos... Um, and you watch Hoovy's Garage. Uh, Hoovy had picked up, uh, Tyler Hoover had picked up one of these and uh, uh, was planning to restore it and actually sold it to uh, his uh, trusted mechanic, the, uh, the car wizard. Uh, so, you know, he's doing a rebuild on that. And it's pretty interesting to see all the features in there. And he's going to be way more versed in talking to you about that. So, uh, yeah, if ever you want to check that out, you know. Uh, other than that, let's see, R8, this is the R8 V8 version. Um, as the uh, side um, side slats here are are not uh, are not a little bit more um, popped out for the uh, V10 version. They have a little bit more of a flare to them, which uh, this uh, cast does not. And this would be variation number three that I'm adding to the collection. And it's literally because in the, it's in this five pack. I wouldn't have bought it individually, but I do have uh, the uh, uh, the one of the original versions in gray. Uh, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a gold version also in another five pack, maybe in the MBX uh, highway uh, sets, one of the sets that was released fairly recently. Then we have the um, uh, Mini Cooper uh, Countryman, which is actually a repeat of one that was in a uh, Top Gun five pack uh, with the white stripes, black five spokes. And I have this one in the same British Racing Green, but without the white stripes and uh, um, different wheels. Uh, that one I had loose and I got in a 9-pack. I'm getting rid of that one. I'm going to keep this one instead. Uh, Stran we already went over. And the last two would be the uh, the Evoke Coupe in the, that uh, metallic orange that's uh, been very popular since the Range Rover Sport launch. Uh, my Land Rover, probably what almost 20 years ago at this point, 
And lastly, we have a Scania fire truck. It's a licensed cast, as you can see, uh, P360. I'm not an expert in fire trucks, so. But yeah, it's a real truck, and this has been reused also, you know, best of, uh, in Matchbox Lane, they had it in, with a Russian livery, you had in all kinds of uh, different uh, liveries. This one is the Sapeur Pompier de la Marne, so, which is a city in France. So this is a French liveried one, which is kind of cool. A little bit of reminiscent of, uh, you know, Strain included in there. So that's pretty cool. Shout out to all my French buddies. Bonjour à vous. All right. And we will finish off the showcase, uh, which is always uh, already stretching on to almost uh, half an hour here, with uh, some premium finds. So one actually is a find the others are actually trades so we're going to move these porsches into the forefront here just this filler for the screen uh first one uh the uh at the same time as i picked up that uh, matchbox uh, pack i also did manage to find this team transport the s13 uh with the uh, sakura sprinter definitely uh, as a nissan aficionado i needed this so much and I also wanted to do a compare with the main line. Um, very similar, same paint job. And this is a K and a KW livery. Uh, this was a SEMA show car. I do not remember what the owner's name is, but it is a SEMA show car. And uh, to pull out also the main line of it, uh, which is a mild uh mild custom or a detailed version that or a version with details that i added with the front you know in a cooler and everything like that uh, a little bit of silver for the uh rear view mirrors and uh, a little bit of exhaust detailing there for the uh the muffler but uh, yeah all in all you know it's an exact repeat of this car um but uh as a premium so we're gonna have the metal base you have those mesh wheels that have been used uh, on the matchbox side of things very repeatedly a few hot wheels have this as well I almost thought that there was no front tampos on this thing there actually are but uh, man those headlights I mean they look like aftermarket kind of like smoked clear lights and it almost looks like there's no front tampos which I was super disappointed of but uh, then in picking it up I saw that Sylvia Sylvia script in that, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the Zenki grill. So I was like, yeah, you know what? It does have front tampos. I'm going to pick that up right away. Score Sprinter, you know, it's a cool truck. You know, it's got the uh, matching livery. It's got those uh, turbine looking wheels, kind of like a, what you'd see on a General Lee or something like that. And of course, you know, front's also detailed out. I like the fact that uh, the grill's blacked out. It's the only Sakura Sprinter I have in my Team Transport collection that uh, has a full black fascia. And it kind of looks cool. And uh, yeah, great looking set. I just wish, honestly, that they had uh, kind of like replicated the, the uh, front lights that you see on the card art here. Um, a little bit better on the uh, the actual car. Because, uh, yeah, literally, it looks like it has no front tampos. Let me know what your opinion is on that, but between you and me. I mean, you put some orange for the uh, for the turn signals in the just right under the front lights. Might as well put some orange on those side markers as well, especially since they're uh, you know, and you got the nice brick lights on the car art and everything like that. Would have been great, great, great opportunity to make a nice Sylvia with a with a really nice front tampo. But you know what? Didn't uh, prevent me from picking it up. This this is definitely something that is a must have in my collection. And I'll finish off with um, a trade, trade number three for a um, one of those um, Lambo Sons of Chases that I seem to stumble upon all the time. Um, I managed to trade the two uh, two uh, two pieces basically for one of those that I really wanted in the collection. So first one is another Team Transport, the Advan. Sakura Sprinter and GTR 32 Skyline. Uh, I have the uh, the um, infamous, uh, as you've seen in previous videos, uh, 
the uh, infamous uh, Skyline van uh, with the uh, carry-on uh, team transport, which is super, super, super popular and, you know, definitely uh, something that's on the want list for a lot of people. And I just had to have the more modern version, you know, the uh, 80s version to go with the 60s version, 60s, 70s version, 80s, 90s in this case, I guess. Um, so, yeah, very cool. I mean, it's GTR 32. It's probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite JDM car of all time so yeah i'm really happy to add this as well i won't go through all the details for the secure sprinter because literally it's the same except for from uh, chrome grill and an advanced livery instead of being a uh, uh kw livery and a blacked out uh chrome uh, part there you know it's really the big difference and that r32 oh love that love that definitely really really cool you got the full tampo obviously since it's a premium and um yeah, i'm gonna be cracking my transports eventually but i'm um, not quite there yet so please forgive me if uh, they stay carded for a while longer and last but not least we'll finish up with the second part of this trade which is a casting that i really 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 was looking for and uh Funnily enough, first trade that I did, trade plus cash, was for the CLK GTR uh, Boulevard um, uh, Mercedes. And now I have this one that was even more looking forward to. The AMG E36 Wagon. Which is awesome. Awesome. I mean, it's been reviewed and reviewed and reviewed time and time again. But look, it's murdered out. It's got a really good stance. Got those wide uh, wheels chrome lip just to give it a little bit more bling i mean come on it's a wagon it's got a big straight six na car pushing out like uh over 250 but not quite 300 horsepower you know and we're talking about a car that uh came out in the uh early night early to mid 90s so you know it was pretty impressive at the time i mean you had the 500e with there was a rung above but uh this was right behind it, basically. So, not sure what's written special edition, honestly. I mean, all AMGs are special editions. So, either way, I mean, Tampa works great. And I'm a wagon lover. So, this is going to be on my Instagram for a wagon Wednesday, most definitely. Very, very probably, I was about to say soon, but it's probably going to be actually in the past by the time you see this. So, We'll leave that as is put the porsches underneath and i will leave you on that so hopefully you enjoyed this showcase you know i've been uh, i'm happy to have uh, made all these finds in the last uh, couple weeks and uh you know grows a collection in a significant way with castings that have meaning to me so uh yeah like follow subscribe uh uh feel free to comment and uh i will catch you on the next one till then happy hunting and stay safe take care bye